My first brush with Stephen King was a collection of short stories uh, that I read in my mid-teens called Night Shift. One of my favorite stories from that uh, collection was one called I Am the Doorway, where an astronaut goes out into space and comes back um, to find, uh, later on, slowly developing on his hand, a bunch of eyes uh, that have been somehow placed there by aliens. <coughs> um, following is an interesting quote from that, when the guy discovers what the eyes can really do. The realization crept on me, then sank home with a frightening rush. My eyes were closed, but I was still looking at the book. What I was seeing was smeary and monstrous, the distorted, fourth-dimensional counterpart part of a book, yet unmistakable for all that. And I was not the only one watching. I snapped my eyes open, feeling the constriction of my heart. The, sen the sensation subsided a little, but not entirely. I was looking at the book, seeing the print and diagrams with my own eyes, perfectly normal, everyday experience, and I was also seeing it from a different, lower angle and seeing it with other eyes. Seeing not a book, but an alien thing, something of monstrous shape and ominous intent. I raised my hand slowly to my face, catching an eerie vision of my living room turned into a horror house. I screamed. There were eyes peering up at me through splits in the flesh of my fingers, and even as I watched the flesh, even as I watched, the flesh was dilating, retreating as they pushed their mindless way up to the surface. But that was not what made me scream. I had looked into my own face and seen a monster. Now that's science fiction, but it um, deals with something that's very interesting and has a particular relevance to anyone who is suffering from mood disorder. How much of what we of what we perceive is value judgments that we place on that thing is a question that I can't see how we'll ever be able to solve because I can't perceive someone else's perceptions. Nor can I, more importantly, perceive the biases or interpretations that they put on that. Uh, Stephen King, to my mind at least, is the best um, version that we have of someone being able to see through an alien's mind, something that's not even human, um, and is so alien to us that it simply doesn't understand anything about this world, but it's seeing everyday things in this world, and it hates them. It's horrified by them, and it actually wants to kill them. It, it's just so malignantly opposed to everything that it sees through the eyes on the astronaut's hand. And the interesting part is, of course, the eyes are attached to the astronaut's body, so the astronaut himself can perceive, in tandem with his own perceptions, his own biases, his own interpretations, he can see those of the alien at the same time. Um, <clears throat> now, how much of what we see and what uh, interpretations we put on that, or what, what, how much of our thoughts or our thinking is based upon projection onto what's actually there is a question that's always fascinated me, especially, again, as I say, in the case of depressives or people suffering from a depression. Because oftentimes, you're, uh, we're back at the insanity thing again, you're perception seems so clear of the surrounding reality um, as to be incontrovertible in your eyes, and it seems that you're seeing things so clearly um, that your way is essentially the way it's so clear that everything is evil and malignant and terrible and depressing and grinding you down and, and, and that sort of thing, and either that's the way that your reality is going to stay permanently, you believe this, or it seems this way, or you believe that other people are deluded. This is this sense that, again, happy people are stupid. Um, the reason why I say that that's insanity is because that certainty is something that um, we really can't be sure of. You don't even have to have an alien uh, intelligence or an alien uh, consciousness in your own body that you can uh, 
as it were, perceived th things through to imagine that. I'm just looking around my living room now, and I wonder how much of what I see, what the form, the form of the thoughts that go through my mind, how much of that is projection that I'm putting on my living room? Again, my cat's sitting right there beside me. My cat sleeps there pretty much his whole life. Um, but what does my living room look like through his eyes? Not just the differences in his point of view or anything, but all the interpretations that he puts on it, all the evaluation, all the projection that he makes upon it. Um, I have uh, another cat that if I uh, use a laser pointer, he'll jump all over the place and try and get the, the point of the laser. Um, and um, uh, it simply doesn't have that effect on me. Uh, so, you know, you can see in little ways how other people's values, perceptions, interpretations are completely different. So how much different must an alien person be? Or how much different must just one healthy human psyche be to another healthy human psyche, let alone someone who is um, in the grips of a malignant moon, a mood disorder? Um, in this kind of way of thinking, sanity itself and insanity are pretty much uh, the same thing. I understand where, I'm, where this ultimately goes, but um, that doesn't particularly bother me because, again, it just injects my old friend uncertainty into everything. <clears throat> if, we, if we think that we can actually perceive things in an accurate way, just the most basic things, or, or in a way that mirrors uh, everyone else's perception, of everything, um, then uh, I think that that is one assumption too many, especially when we're dealing with human auto extinction. I don't know how my wife perceives anything. I don't understand even her uh, basic thing like her sexual orientation. Um, how can I understand so many other things that are to be understood out there? Have you ever thought about what it must be like just to live in one of your neighbor's houses? What that reality of living life in there must be like? You look into someone else's apartment, if you live in an apartment building, when you walk down the hallway, and you oftentimes you look into their, their apartment, or you just see out of the corner of your eye, and what you're looking into often does look alien, doesn't it? Um, I was in a job once when I used to, I used to deliver wine. And whatever, you know, you'd have to deliver it into people's homes a lot of the time. And if I saw someone's house made up in what I call a very sort of traditional waspish kind of way with the severely clean and formal look of it, uh, there's a lot of that in Canada, actually. This looked alien to me. It didn't just look different. It looked out and out weird and alien. And this is just me, and this is just me interpreting how someone else's apartment looked. How much, how, how much different must their mental uh, window on the universe look than mine? How can I even say anything of the value that they place on existence itself, uh, let alone uh, things like harm, pleasure, pain, that kind of thing? I can observe their actions. I can listen to what they say. Beyond that, I don't have a clue what's going on in their mind, and I rather suspect that if I was able to somehow, uh, the two of us, to put on some sort of a uh, bunch of electrodes on our brains, um, and I could somehow simultaneously see through my mind and through their minds, uh, using their eyes and my eyes at the same time, what they would be seeing would probably be just about as alien as what Stephen King's aliens saw. Uh, I don't think that that should lead us to um, conclude nothing because, uh, or conclude that nothing is concludable. <laughs> but what I would say, I would say it as a cautionary note to anyone who seems to think that we know enough about minds, perceptions, interpretations, that sort of thing, to um, overlook the projections and sort of standardize human, uh, human perception. You can't do that. I cannot imagine how one could possibly do such a thing. How do I see your universe through your mind and your eyes? It's just not going to happen. 
Um, and again, um, one shouldn't allow this to let you freeze up and say, okay, I, this is utter and total solipsism here. No, because I understand what a door is. I understand what this computer screen is. I understand what that lamp that's shining into my face is. I understand what that cat is. I understand what the sink in there is. I can interact with human beings on all kinds of levels. Uh, I can interact with them very efficiently. But do I see what they see? There's no way I will ever know that. <laughs> Thank you.